Here we are guys, first series on season 2020. Well today I'm going to be talking about how do you set up a React on an Angular application, um, what's the differences, how do you start on um, working with these um, languages. So before we start, um, everything that you see on my screen you should be able to see it as well. Um, you're going to have a screen here popping up and this is where you can see a very close up view of what I see. Um, this is a new way of the video, the new style that I was talking about in a previous series. Um, I'm introducing this kind of a new style to it and I hope you guys like it. If not, I'll swap it through the videos, but you should see, you should see everything I have. Now, on these videos, you should be able to access my GitHub, which is basically my GitHub, portfolio, my GitHub repositories, and I'll be pushing everything to these libraries for you to see, so don't worry about that, and you can try it out on every series. Um, I'm also going to explain the basics guys for you, so in case if you're new to this, so for example you need to install uh, nodejs.org um, to run all your npm command lines and I'll be linking the video somewhere below of how to do that, that'll be a very basic, but I'll start on how to initialize the project, where to find the command lines and where to get the information you need. Let's kick it off. I'm going to create two folders, I'm just going to minimize this down here. I've created two folders, a React Bananas app and an Angular uh, Bananas app. Now, I open the terminal. I like to use my terminal. Uh, if you're on Windows, I assume you use Git Bash, which is also a good tool. But instead of using a terminal, actually, what we can actually do is in Visual Studio Code. Oh, this is another code of mine. Um, I'll open a project. I have my Angular app here. Oh, start fresh. Now, this is videos from yesterday, to be honest. And what happened, guys, is I did videos of eight hours recording, but what happened is the quality was very poorly. So, hence I'm here doing it again. And I can repeat what I've said yesterday. And hopefully this video quality is going to be much more better. So, Visual Studio is an editor. And you can find them also by downloading, going to uh, Visual Studio Code on Google and then finding it here to download. It's a free editor. You download it for Mac, install it. It's very simple. Right, so in one visual editor, I open a React application and the other one, I open my Angular one. Now, in both of them, I click Terminal to open the terminal. And I hope you can see it. This is the terminal. And I think, I hope I could zoom. I couldn't zoom too much in. I think that's the max I can do. Can I? No, you're not listening. Come here, come here. No, can't minimize that. Shame. What I can do is just close this like that, and you can see the terminal on both of them. Now, in Angular, once you install the CLI in Angular to start the application, let's start it here. You can do a thing was ng new, and then the name of the app or ng new or ng new. Now, I'll show you where to find it. So when you go on angular.io uh, slash start, you should be able to find command line. I, this command line, as you do it once every six months, I can't remember it, but it's something, create a new project. Create a new project, and they don't have, they have so much documentation, but they don't have the basics. Introduction. I'll link this link below, which is the, how to install the Angular CLI. That will be another video. But here's the thing I was talking about, the command line that you're searching for to create a new app. So you do ng new and the name of the app. So my app will be bananas app. That's the name of the, our application in Angular. So ng new. Now on I think this was picked up an error from my last mistake. So I think it's thinking I've got an app here and I'm just gonna clean my trash, run the same app again. Huh, it must be thinking I'm inside. So what I'm gonna do is, well, to not, this will take a while. I've got a lot of stuff in my stuff. I'm just gonna delete these two folders, create a new folder. One of them is going to be ng for Angular. Ah, I could do Angular. Angular app. And we call it a React app. 
two folders there. Now, in Visual Studio, I'll open it. That's something else. I know a project file, open. Let's go to desktop. I'll open my Angular app here. Beautiful. Right click, new window. And I can open a project here, open a folder. And this will be my React app. Look, freshly started for you guys. So this way you'll see. It. Then you go new terminal for both of them. New terminal. And then I'll write my ng new angular or smaller uh, angular bananas app. Uh, make it cleaner. Bananas app. Now, first thing in angular that we'll do is okay, start the work. So, first thing in angular we'll do is they're asking, do you want routing? And routing is another subject I'm going to mention in the next video. But in this video, I'll just say it says, would you like a default setup? I think it's from Angular 6. If you like a default set of routing and what it will do, it will pull in a new module. Now in Angular, everything is modularized. Um, you create your small modules and then you can include them in other modules to build the bigger packages or bigger projects. And uh, routing is one of the things they were asked is if you, want to, uh, if you want to set up your default kind of first routing navigation. Now routing is, uh, if you think about domain and we are building a banana app, .com, let's say, Anything after the slash is your routing, is your path. So it'll be dashboard, um, user, and so on, and products. This is all goes after the path. Oops, one second. That'll be cut out. I think the postman was there and he disappeared. So anything after the path is your URL. So uh, would you like to add an angle routing? And um, everybody will say yes. So path. What type of library you want to use? Now it says here if you want to use CSS, uh, SAS, uh, I prefer SAS, and I'll tell you why and I'll show you in the next videos. It's a better structure, it's on top of CSS, it compiles SAS to CSS. Um, the same thing is just you can group your CSS classes and you can inherit classes and you can create mixins. So while this is creating in React, uh, I think React was straight away straight forward to selling the command line, you get click get started. Um, I'll do a search npm x tutorials npx. Of course, I can't find it. Create a new app. It's under docs create app, something like this. It's here. So I'm going to link this as well document slash create app. Um, I believe it should be the first thing you ever see as a developer. Anyway, so to create an app, you do npx, not npm, npx is part of npm package, I believe. And then you do the space create, create app. Was it create React app? Oh, complicated, create. Create React app. That's a default command line. So the same as ng-new, ng-new. Um, so you can call it the same. Bananas app. Now in React, they specify to be all smaller, otherwise it fails. I think this is something new in the build. Um, so that should create me my new app, and it won't ask you anything. It will just set it up for you. Um, it will have the default uh, version that it's using, and it'll set it up for you. So while this install, React installs much more faster than Angular. Once Angular is installed, it will just create out. I like it that by the default, as soon as it installs, it got six vulnerabilities that it found, and uh, they haven't fixed it in the core initial setup. But no, it's us. So React, while it's building it here, uh, we're just waiting for a couple of seconds. What you can do is to run your application or to start your application as simple as npm run start. Now, what does npm run mean? npm run means it is it goes into a node package and look at in your folder package and it looks at the package.json file. And your package.json file has got scripts. And now these are the scripts that it picks up. Run means run on these scripts. And when you do npm run start, it does ng serve. Whereas in React, what you do, uh, look at the structure here, comparison. You can see that in our Angular app, you've got both source folders, and then it's got the app, or the details more structured. And in React, it's just got JS, JavaScript, it's by default set up. But it's got the package JSON. Is it outside SRC? Yes, and this one also outside SRC. Beautiful. So first file in the folder it picks up, 
and then when you run npm run start here, it actually runs a React script start. So it's a different npm run start. Oh, one thing. Now we find an error. And that is because when you do the setup, it will set up a folder and the, the, the application will be in that folder. So you go into that folder, the same as in Angular. Just go into side that folder. Oops. You go inside the folder and then you run npm run start. And you do npm run start here. So both of these apps are kicking off. You're gonna have a React, an Angular uh, 3000 is normally React, and Angular is 4200. So React kicked up very quickly. Angular, even though compiled, it didn't open the browser. Uh, so Angular is local host 4200. And these are initial pages. You know, these are initial pages of React and Angular. React has been a little bit fancy and gives it a little bit of spinning wheel, and Angular is still keeping it simple. Right, well, there you have, you've got two apps running. Now let's look at the structures. Structure-wise, source app is your first app component and your first app module. Now in Angular, you'll see a lot of things in these modules because it's MVC, all is modularized. And in your um, React app, you'll see app.js. And what thing, the first thing you'll see, which sometimes shocks the people is it's functions, it's got, it's very pure functions. Now, some of the tutorials will explain you in classes, some of them in functions, some of them will give you the full story and tell you how to do it in classes and functions. And why is the difference of using them? I'll tell that as well, I'll explain the more detail to it. Now, I wanna start by, we're talking about initialization of the application, and I think it's important here to mention of how does it actually get initialized. In Angular, you've got an ng module, which is the first module that it picks up. Now, app module, it's when it boots up, it's got this bootstrap here. It bootstrap the app component. An app component is a TS file. You can see a component in Angular because it's going to have a decorative app component. Now, what does this decorative do? This decorative actually has definition of the, the selector, which is the wrapping div or wrapping element that wraps up your HTML and a link to your style sheet. Now, HTML gets compiled so this is a reference to the HTML file. So every component has an HTML, a CSS, a spec, and a TS file. Now it's a class based and it's got a reference here to the HTML and a reference to the CSS. In React, another side, I'll just minimize this here. It's got app.js file and how does it initialize it? Well, in index.js, it's got a thing here called React uh, DOM render and where it renders the HTML and it actually access, it finds the ID in your HTML file. So everything in, in these uh, languages starts from an index file. And now the index file in React is in index.html. So you can see here. The index file in Angular is in source folder. It's the same thing. The difference here is they're defining the app root here which is they're already pulling it in, but in React, they're specifying an ID here, which is id.root, and what does this app.js file does, which is the, well, no, the index.js file does, it actually finds the selector, and then it finds the ID as you do in JavaScript, and injects this, doing, uh, doing document create element, and injects it into the root. Whereas Angular boots it up, and it, it actually loads it inside here, in the app root. Now, you may think, well, the structure is a little bit complicated. Um, and if you look at it from a, uh, an Angular perspective, you can also do it, do it directly without separating the files by removing just going template, backticks, and go, yes, I am here, which is the Angular. And what we we'll actually do in Angular, should refresh automatically, I refresh this. This is where it loads. So it doesn't take into concern the HTML that was just missing. Here, this one. It actually took the template HTML that here. Because what it does in the end, it takes the HTML, it compiles it into a string and it puts it in here. Now, if I just go back to this, I just want to show you back to the HTML. It will return back the... If I say... Ah, template URL. So, because you reference the URL, he needs to select the template URL. So this HTML loads. 
Now, if you look at the HTML here, if I delete this, there's this one thing called router outlet. Now, router outlet is the routing module that was the beginning that you saw, and I want to mention a little bit about it. So in your app modules, you'll see a couple of things. A, you, you always, as a module, when you define an Angular module, you declare your components, you can export your components and other modules you want to use, and then you can import the modules you need for this module to work, to breathe and work. And here, browser module is by default, and the browser module uh, brings in a lot of uh, these ng ifs, uh, common things that you use in your HTML uh, logic. And in app routing is the another module that it comes from an Angular app routing module, which they automatically gets built uh, with the CLI. This is the routing I was talking about, and it pulls it in here. An app routing is is where you define your paths, your which path. Uh, on which path should which component load. In React, it's totally different. You basically wrap and then you define uh, in your wrapping divs, if this is the logic load, this component, this load, this. There's no module. Um, so in React, you would see this function. And now this function can also be returned as a class. That's, you can create it into a class. Um, and that's the difference between using classes and function. That's another subject, but for now, I can show you, so you have a function here, you're gonna export this function. Yeah, every, everything you see in JavaScript, you, go, you, you create a class and then you export that class. You create a class at the top and then you export it at the bottom. Turning this into a class, I think it was class, app, and then, what you normally have to do, you have to extend these, um, and you're, expe you're extending it by, by the component. Now, a component is a React thing that you're inheriting its life, uh, life cycle hooks and um, it's, it's now a class based. Now what you're actually going to do is you're going to do a render which actually will return because class now you've got this is a method you've got to render a method that will return you this HTML uh, JavaScript stuff. And if you look at it, it still works the same thing. Now I'm just gonna remove it to show you. Yes, yes I can. So it renders it here in uh, React. Now you've got a class based. Now if you see a lot of pros around some class, some function, don't get confused, don't get worried. It's the same thing. Um, like it's not a fully different pro it, um, or different kind of structure, it's this, it's a way of building React apps. You build components and then uh, which uh, uses a class and then you build some functional which you don't have the state. Um, but this is another, again, another subject I want to breathe into a next lesson. So for now, I just wanted to show you how you bring these two apps routing, something else I'll bring in the next lesson, but you've got a router module by default here. Now I just can say, I am at uh, Angular. I'm at Angular and I'm at React, so these are two loaded, uh, two loaded applications. So this is lesson one, and this is how you actually initialize two, both of these applications. Um, it's a good start um, to kind of roll on to the videos. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to push both of these into my GitHub, and I'm going to start layering them one by one. So you can start following, and you can download each one of them, and you can try it out for yourself. I'll just keep it short and sweet. Subscribe. Don't forget to like, spread the word. I'll see you next one.